Okay, for lab two, what we're gonna study is we wanna actually talk about sequence valves. I wanna show you why a sequence valve is important, what it is, and how actually cool it is. So let me just kind of talk to you about limit valves and sequencing. So now from pneumatics, we had kind of a sequencing that said, once cylinder A fully extended, we get that information from our limit valve, then you can go ahead and make cylinder B fully extend. In hydraulics, we don't need to do that because we can work with pressures. We have seen from lab one that during extension or retraction, the pressure is low. So we can actually say, you know what, it has fully extended because the pressure changed in the system. Or it's not extended yet because the pressure has changed. So essentially what I'm saying is we don't actually need limit valves. We can still use limit valves in certain situations, but here we're going to sequence an operation with two cylinders just studying the pressure. And the way we're going to do that is use a sequencing valve. So a sequencing valve is a normally closed valve. 99% of the valves you're going to be talking about in hydraulics are going to be normally closed. So sometimes we have special valves we'll talk about later that are normally open. But in this case, our normally closed valve will either open or close depending on the pressure. Now, a sequencing valve is going to remain closed until a particular pressure is reached. So what's going to happen is that we're going to make one cylinder extend. The system pressure is going to be low while it's extending. When it fully gets out, the pressure is going to increase. This guy is going to notice that the pressure is increased and then it's going to allow flow to go to my second cylinder and it will act. So the second cylinder is not going to do anything until the first cylinder is fully extended. A few applications could be in a manufacturing facility, maybe we have a metal bender. So we actually may want to have a clamp that clamps a piece of metal into place and then another stamp that comes down and actually stamps it and pushes it or bends it. In that case, we need sequencing. One is my clamp has to fully extend and hold it, and then my stamping cylinder can come and actually bend it. Another application which is really cool is in airplanes. So as you know, the airplane's landing gear comes out, but the first thing that happens is the door is open. So as opposed to putting a limit switch or a limit valve or any electronics, we can just say, hey, when the door opens and it fully opens, then the pressure goes up. Once the pressure goes up, my sequencing valve kicks in and it allows the, the landing gear actuator to then push the landing gears down. Sequencing is so cool in hydraulics because pressures change all the time in hydraulics, unlike they do in pneumatics. Let's build this circuit. First thing I'm gonna do is do a couple basic connections that are standard all the time. I'm gonna take my pressure here and I'm gonna hook that up and then I'm going to go into pressure here. Then I'm going to take over here, I'm going to take my tank and I'm going to put it right to my tank over here. The other thing that I want to do is I want to study the pressures. So I'm actually going to take my pressure line here and I'm going to take it up straight to my pressure meter over here so I can study it. Those are standard connections. Now I can move forward and actually hook things up. I'm going to start with my A, I'm going to hook everything up, and then my B and hook everything up. So starting with my A line, I can see that there's a line coming out of here and going to a T, and then from there it goes to two places. So I've got a couple different options. One is I can just take a T and shove it right on here, but if I do that, I've got kind of a tight space in here. I don't feel comfortable working like that. Try not to push these things. The space is we got lots of it, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna go in here first. Now, I got lots of room to fool around. I'm gonna put this guy on here. And don't be concerned about, you know, if a circuit looks really complicated, it'll work out. Do one thing at a time. Be methodical about these things. Okay, so I've got my T there and I can take a look at it, it's on my circuit. I've got two things going on. One is that it actually goes to another T over here. And the other is this line goes to my cylinder. I'm gonna hook the cylinder line up first. So I'm going to take this line here, connect it on there. I'm going to take this line coming out of here and go to my cylinder. So I already had a hose hooked up there. Actually, I'm going to use that hose. So I've got this guy, and I'm going to go on here. Now what I need to do is I need to put this into this guy, my sequencing valve. But before I do that, I take a look at my schematic, and I see there's actually another split there. The split is I have to go to a check valve and I go to my sequencing valve. So from here, I'm actually going to, I got a couple different options, but 
One is, I really want to just make sure that everything's all good. Um, I'm going to put my T-valve onto here, and then from there, I'm going to split it into two places. One is going to go to my sequencing valve, and the other is going to go to a check valve. Let me do my sequencing valve first. Okay, so, where, oh, where do I hook it up? i got three ports here. Well, you'll see that these connections are very much like how the schematic looks. So, that's my in, that's my out, and that's my drain. We'll talk about what a drain is later and why we use those. So, I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to put this here. Now, I have to put a check valve on here. So I'm going back to here, and I say, okay, so I've got this check valve that goes here. I've got that connected. So I'm going to take my check valve and hook it up, and I have check valves on here. Which one am I going to use? Either this one or this one. Now, the polarity of the check valve matters a lot. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go into the ball side of my check valve. That's easy. So over here, I'm going to go into the ball side. I'm going to use this guy. I'm going straight into the ball side of my check valve. Oh. So now I got a little pressure in my check valve. There's a problem. I'm going to go down to see if I have pressure here. I don't. So just making sure all my fittings are connected. Okay, good. So now going back here, I have a line going out of my sequence valve, a line going to check valve. And out of there, I'm going to go into another T. Okay, just go get another T. One thing at a time. It'll all sort out once you just take it methodically. So I've got a line coming out of here. I'm gonna put this guy right on. Good. Now, out of here, I have two lines. Okay, and I've got two lines here. One is my sequencing valve, and the other goes to my pump. No, sorry. One is my sequencing valve, and the other goes to my meter that's gonna tell me the flow rate. Okay, good. So I've got two things here, and I can do that. One, is going to go to my sequencing valve. I can handle that. I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to take this and go over to my sequencing valve. Now, where do I go to my sequencing valve? Where do I go? Okay, oh, I'm going to the out of the sequencing valve. Sweet. And I know where the out is because I'm looking at the actual diagram. Okay, good. So I'm going to my out. Now, I'm continuing and I've got another line going to this guy. Okay, I can do that. I'm going to get a longer line. Bring it over here. Now the hoses are looking a little bit messy. It's okay. I know that they're right because I followed a very exact procedure. I looked at each junction and I went forward from there. Don't let this overwhelm you because it can get pretty crazy. But as you do it methodically, you will find everything is connected properly. Okay, good. So out of here, I want to go to one of these guys. So I'm going to need another T. That's okay. I'm just going to go get my T. And I'm going to work with that. Now, out of here, I've got my T coming out of here. Now, from here, I go to two places. One is I actually go to this guy to study my pressure. So I go to my pressure gauge. The other is I'm going to go to the cylinder extension of this guy. Okay, good. So I'm grabbing my hose here. I'm going to come out of here. My diagram says I go to two places. One is the extension of the clamping, sorry, the extension of the stamping cylinder. And the other is I'm going to go to here. Now, I'm going to get a short pose for that. And I'm going to go right into here. So connect that guy on there. And this guy's going to go into here. Okay, good? Good. So now. Am I done? Well, no. I still have a port here that's empty and a port there that's empty. Let's continue and see where we're at. Now, I've got all of my lines done for my A. Now I'm going to focus on my B. I'm going to start from my B and I'm going to go to where I have to go. So, out of here, I have my line coming out of my B. Now, I'm going to actually use this short line because I know that I'm going directly to a T. Yeah, there are a lot of T's. I'm going to use a short line because I'm going to go directly to another T. Yeah, there are a lot of T's. Okay, good. So out of here. Now to a T. I'm going to grab another T. Connect this in here. That's connected. Now, I'm going to go back to my diagram. Out of here, I can see I'm going to two places. One is the retraction of this cylinder and the other is the retraction of the other cylinder. Okay, that's easy. I can just take this guy, put this on here. Actually, I can go from here 
right into here. I have found that this hose is too short. I want to put it on there, but I can't. And never press these hoses. Don't get them so that they're so tight, you're barely getting it connected. Go ahead and use a longer hose, even if it means that there are just more hoses on your diagram and it may look a bit like a mess, it doesn't matter. Don't stress these hoses, don't stress any of these components, don't stress the fittings, don't have any kind of you know, connection here that feels any kind of physical tension for whatever reason. From here, I go to my T. Now, I'm not stressing my hose when I bring this guy over here and connect him to here. Good. So now, one last thing to go. Just going to go back to my diagram to check. Out of my T, two lines. One goes to that cylinder, one goes to the other cylinder. Okay. So, taking a hose out of here. Now, I could maybe use a short one here, but again, I don't want to stress anything. It's okay. You can use longer lines. It's safer to do that. If you know a short line will work, go ahead and use it. This guy's going to go over here. Okay, so, got everything hooked up properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check all my fittings to make sure that these guys are all rotated properly. I do it when I'm actually hooking them up, so I know that they are, but it's safe to do that. There's one thing I haven't hooked up, which I've kind of left to last, because I want to talk to you about what a drain is. Now, as we see down here, we have a tank. Now, the tank is actually under a small bit of pressure, but the drain is not. There's no pressure in the drain, and the drain is kind of a drip drain. Its function is to get rid of just little drips of oil that are in the system. The tank is all about return. All the fluid that goes through the cylinders will come out and go into the tank. But the drain is that kind of spot where, you know what, if you've got a couple drops of oil somewhere stuck in a valve, you can just let it out there. Now, there's no pressure in the drain, it's just almost to atmosphere. Now, the reason we have a drain here, and the function of this drain, and the whole purpose of it, is so that the spool itself, when it moves in here, it actually has a little bit of oil that's stuck in it. And there's, there are kind of two chambers in here, and there's that one chamber that gets stuck, there's just a few drops of oil in there, and as it's moving back and forth, that oil needs to get out. So there's just a few drops, it's not under pressure, because I've got pressure in here, and pressure coming out of here, the drain itself is part of the feedback, and there's really no pressure in there. It's actually inside the spool. The drain itself, there's pressure here, and there's pressure in here, but there's no pressure in my drain because it's on the outsides of the spool where there's no pressure inside. It just happens that as the spool is moving, there are some drops that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to hook up my drain, and I'm going to go in here, I'm going to take my hose, go for my drain. I could probably have used a shorter hose, but I don't want to stress anything out, and I'm just going to hook into here, and now I'm going to go over to my drain. I have to make sure that I connect to what's called drain, and not this, because the actual tank, again, has a little bit of pressure in it, and it will never drain if it sees that pressure. Now, I've got everything hooked up. I'm going to press play and get it going, but I'm just going to stop and pause and say there's a particular way to turn this system on. I want to make sure I follow that procedure. Okay, good. So, I'm going to make sure that this guy is all the way counterclockwise. He is. This guy is in this position, so this valve is wide open. That goes straight to the tank. Now, this guy is in the middle. That's fine. I don't want to have this active in one or the other because then things will start moving as soon as I turn it on. Okay, I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to slowly increase this, very slowly. Okay, I don't see any pressure buildup, and that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and slowly move him down, and you'll see some pressure in my system. Now, I'm going to crank that up to 500. 500 is a good working pressure for everything. Now we'll see this in action. What's going to happen is that we'll see the pressure here as it's going. So, I am going to actually now activate this and make it go. That goes up, but the pressure's low. The pressure goes up. Did you see that move? Let's try that again. Now, at some point, we'll talk about hydraulic metering to slow these things down. 
be kind of nice if I can slow them down right now, but as I do it, the pressure, we'll watch the pressure, it'll be low during extension. When it fully gets extended, it, the pressure will go up. When the pressure goes up, this thing will allow flow through it, which will make that go. So you will see that this cylinder doesn't start extending until that's all the way out. This is so cool. Here we go. Ready? Pressure up, cylinder moving. Now I will retract everything. So imagine this. This is the door opening up for the landing gear. That is the landing gear. The landing gear we don't want coming on unless the door is fully open. Here, the doors are opening. They're fully open now. Now the landing gear comes on. Now, right now, when I do this, they start to retract at the same time. We could use another one of these valves, sequencing valve, to make actually that go down and then this go down. But for now, that tells us all about these valves. I think we're experts at this. You guys have a good understanding of how these sequencing valves work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the sequence pressure or the set point pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the set pressure on the sequencing valve. So change when the sequencing happens. And I want to change the pressure a little bit. So I'm just going to run this thing. And I've got this thing cranked right up. So it's all the way in. It's going to require a lot of pressure to allow the flow to go through. And you'll see that it doesn't actually go through. So here we go. It's extending. Now, we can see my pressure has gone to 500 PSI in my system, and the pressure that this thing is seeing is actually quite high, but right now, it's not allowing the flow to go through, because I've got it set above 500 PSI. I'm going to lower it to just below 500 PSI, and we'll see that, see now there's pressure in there and it's going up. So now, I'll do that again, I'll back it off, and I'll do it one more time when the pressure goes out, it reaches and it goes. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crank this all the way down to like zero, like really, really, really low. And we'll see, it won't sequence anymore. It won't work because it's, it's, it's set to let fluid go through when the pressure is really low. And we know the pressure is really low during this. Here we go. And they both, well, you know what? I can't set this thing low enough below the activation pressure or the pressure that happens during extension. So sequencing valves don't go down to all the way down to zero. You can't set them to zero because they're designed to sequence. So I can have a really low setting in my sequencing valve and it still works. Now that doesn't go up, even though this is all the way down to its lowest setting. So obviously the lowest setting is below 110 PSI, which we learned from lab one. We saw that during the extension, the pressure in the system was 110 PSI. I could probably go in here and tweak this thing so it would be below 110. That's not what I'm after. So there we go. I'm gonna shut this guy over to here. No. I think I'm just going to shut it all down now. So I'm leaving it over here. I'm going to lower my pressure. I'm going to open this up. Now I'm going to put this back to here and I'm going to shut this off. If you don't do that like that, you're going to have pressure left in here and you won't be able to put the quick disconnects on. So now you guys are experts at sequencing valves and you understand how they work and why they work and how to adjust them. They're super cool.